happy Tuesday everybody. Um, this week's video is more chain making, but we're doing cold connect chain making. Uh, last week I had a comment on the video about now I need to learn how to solder. And I thought, no you don't. We can still make chain without solder. So don't let that detour you from making a handmade chain. So I'm going to show you a couple of different styles. I'm sure there's way more than I can even imagine right now. Um, but a good source too to look for chain ideas is on Pinterest. Um, there's a lot of people that are so clever coming up with chain link ideas. I just have a couple that I've used for several years and I just thought we'd share those today. So one chain that you could do without solder is just using steel wire. I've done some really nice chains on big fancy pieces just using steel wire. And this is so strong you do not need to solder it shut. Um, I'll pop up a couple of pictures of pieces I've made with just using this steel wire. And then another material I like to use is tubing. I've just got a couple sizes here that I'll play with today. And you can buy jump rings that are already soldered shut. And actually I need to start doing that myself. <laughs> Because if you saw me last on last week's chain making video, I solder half of the ring shut and then I take an open link and slide two soldered shut rings onto it. I could just be buying rings that are already soldered shut and saving myself a lot of time. So buy yourself a bunch of rings that are already soldered. And then I like to take just a little strip. You can buy like flat wire. And we're going to use some of that. I'm just going to cut some slices of tube. some strips of brass and I went and made some steel jump rings and just do that like last week's video. I put them around the dowel rod and then cut them with the jeweler saw. And then I thought I'd cut up a few pieces of license plate. Play around with that today. So now I've got my pieces and we can get started. I want everything to be smooth. So I think I'll pair the steel wire with the street sign, or the license plate. Both very urban kind of materials. And again, that steel wire is strong. That's so strong it's even difficult to kind of line them back up. But you'll definitely want to make sure that that's smooth and that actually is. Let's take a little sandpaper across that anyway. And you'll want to kind of sand and scrub this steel wire anyway to finish it because it's got like a layer of rust on it. And then seal it with some wax. Oops, put that on backwards. There we go. Oh, 
It'll take a little going back and forth to get that nice and smooth. Much better. of a chain. Let's just put all these different links together. It'll be a little mixed media chain. Let's see. Put on a little piece of sterling tubing. Just slide that on there. Close up that steel ring. So let's do another steel. Take one of these strips of sterling that I have, and I'm going to round and roll up the end. Take some round nose pliers, open that up a little bit. And close that back up. the other end and I'm going to roll it the opposite direction of that other end. And if you wanted to, you could stamp some design on here. Give it a little extra texture. Let's see. Let's use another one of the closed rings for that. Open that back up a little bit. Take a little shorter sterling. So that's made almost a little S shape. I need to switch over to the flat pliers just to get in there. Bend that over. You can even tap it a little bit with the mallet. to close that up a little bit more. So I take I use the brass strips the same way I'm using the silver strips. But a lot of times I like to make a real short connection too. Let's cut that and I'll show you. And then this, I like to roll both of them the same direction. It's 
so that I end up with a link like this. And then we're going to take this larger tubing, and it's thin walled, not the heavy walled. And I'm going to take it over to the anvil. I'm going to flare both sides over. It makes a really pretty link. So we're going to take the jump ring, or the sliced tubing rather, and one of those dapping punches. Tap it a few times, flip it. Oops. Oh. Okay, hang on, that might take me five minutes to find. <laughs> okay, not as bad as I expected. And I'm moving up to a larger dapping punch. And just keep tapping and flipping over. And you want to make sure it's spreading on all sides. Sometimes it wants to go more on one side than the other. Switch over to a hammer, and then just tap all around the edge. And the goal is to get both sides to fold over until they touch. I just think this makes a really pretty link. It's got a little dimension to it, more than just having a jump ring or even a flat disc. It's just a little rounded, really pretty. And I usually use that connection with this little curled end piece. Let's open that up, slide it in, This looks pretty to have it strung either direction with the little curls on the front or this way. And again, this is a nice surface to stamp and put a little pattern.
I have to make some smaller steel jump rings in order to fit through my tubing here. It was kind of a small tube, but you can make a fairly delicate chain too. And that's using brass tubing and steel wire. And that was just um, some steel wire that I got at the hardware store. And it says it's 19 gauge. So that would make a nice delicate little chain. I really like the look of this. A little brass and steel. That would make a gorgeous chain. Hope that sparks some ideas for you on cold connect chain making. I wanted to share you share with you this little snippet of chain. It's the idea of the tube flared on both sides. But I actually made it from an old shell casing and just sliced it and got myself a little brass tubing. So that was a nice recycled project. And then this piece was sitting on my bench and this is back from the riveting video that I did last year. And that's totally a link. When you're putting the tubes in you could take one of your soldered rings and hook it in there. I'm going to take a big one that I've got that's open just to show you. That one's too thick. <laughs> Here's a better view. But that would make a really neat link and a very dimensional that would look good on either side as the chain flipped. So lots of little ideas. But I hope that gets you started on making some Cold Connect chain. We'll see you next week.